What we have here is a Gretz 4R417 tube radio. Um, I believe it's 1960, 61. You can always check that on radiomuseum.org. And um, it came to me in rather poor shape, uh, not working, um, very dirty. Um, I've removed it out of the, the casing, uh, which will be renovated later. Uh, the first priority, obviously, then is to get this thing to work and then see if it's worth going going ahead and doing the, the rest of the work on the, on the casing. Um, the radio has some pretty obvious defects. Taking it out of the case was pretty easy. It was just four screws and then unscrewing the bottom uh, panel, um, taking out those control buttons on that you see on the left, bottom left there, which are for the various preset tone controls. The radio also has a bass and treble control, but those are preset for speech and music and orchestra and so on. There are a few things that are pretty obvious. Uh, the first one is that button on the bottom right there, which uh, tells me that the power switch was not working. We can also see that it's missing a piano button, which is precisely in the power button. So I would guess they messed that up and, and decided to bypass it with a fixed switch. We'll have to see that works. Another thing is, if you go closer, we see the selenium rectifier flying around in the wind, which is a bit disconcerting and pretty dangerous actually, because the contacts are at the bottom uninsulated as usual. This does not have a chassis earth uh, connection, it's just the two wire to the mains plug. Furthermore, if we look a bit closer, I can see a resistor that's loose over here. That resistor is just flying around. Don't know where that goes to. If you look inside, it seems to be in its original form, which is a good thing. There's the power switch, which we'll have to try and get to work. I can see the button activating there. So this is a normal toggle switch that's uh, activated by this push button over there. All the capacitors seem to be those Eero paper types which are in pretty bad shape. You can see one over here which looks like it's seen better days. Um, other than that, the usual. Very suspicious wiring. We'll have to just check all that, check all the components, check all resistors for their values. These resistors in these old German radios tend to hold their value quite well. The capacitors are a different story, but that's normal. This thing is 60 years old or so. Here, these push buttons are the, as I said, if you look at the front of the panel, we've got something that says Außen left. Mag out, whatever that is, 4R, not sure what that is. And if we go to this side, we have Sprache, I think it's speech, solo, and orchestra. These are the preset tone controls. All the, all the connections seem to be working. So we might not have a chord problem, which is usually a bummer. Good thing it's not flying around. These seem to be okay. In fact, if we look at the little window here that shows the level of the tone, we can see that it's working quite well. I believe this one works as well. See it opens up as you go higher. I've checked that the... Where is the dial? If you see that in the middle there, the indicator is moving, so the chords are okay. If we put this on FM, which in German is UKW, that seems to move as well. So all the chords seem to be okay. We have a few suspicious wires over here. This one wire is just flying around. It was cut. Not sure what that goes to, so we'll have to check that on the schematic. Four, two sets of wires go into the speaker. The one set is obviously the normal, the other one will be a high uh, voltage tweeter or for the higher frequencies. Um, these contacts, these switches here, 
are really dirty, but I think they, they, they'll be okay. What worries me more is that we have another pair of wires just flying around here. These two switch assemblies connect to the chassis via a 9-pin makeshift tube, sho tube socket. So you can actually remove them, but I left them on because I do want to power this up. I know you're not supposed to do that. I'll check some of the main problems like that loose resistor and check that the rectifier is fine. And then I'll power it up with my lamp reducer just in case there's a short. I started off at a very low wattage, um, which means that if there is a short, um, we don't have very dangerous currents flowing through here. Right, next step. Okay, I've um, done a bit of checking and it seems that the mains line is, is quite clear. Um, it's reaching the transformer. There doesn't seem to be any shorts. Um, the power switch on the right, that little power switch, is confirmed to be required to, to power this, this on. So um, I've left it on. Everything else is off. I've put a just a short antenna into the U into the uh, FM um, antenna dipole antenna input at the back, and I'm powering this up. I'm going to power this up using my lamp um, reducer, if that's what you'd call it. Uh, I can activate three or four different lamps to give it more power. At the moment I've set it just to the 240 watt bulb, so we've got 80 watts. And I'm going to switch it on. Right, what we should see is the two lamps on the left glowing for a while and hopefully dropping in, uh, in dimness, becoming dimmer, which means that uh, there's no short. If there is, They'll be very bright, and I will just switch it off very quickly. Let's go. Hey, I see no shorts. We have no shorts. That's wonderful. Oh, that's when the tubes heat up. It starts drawing more current, but not enough glow for it to indicate a short. I think we'll see what we have here. Let's have a look. I'm putting it on the dial light. One of the dial lights is working. The other one is dead. Not surprising. As I said, the antenna is uh, just a short wire going into the dipole input, the FM antenna. And it's on UKW, which is FM. And give it a bit of power. We have a buzz. We have a buzz. It's not completely dead. That's good news. Oh. And it's picking up. Brilliant. Brilliant. We have FM. Pretty distorted, but it's there. See if we get any more. It's perfect. Well, not perfect, but it's picking up quite well. And I can see a glow. Yeah. The magic eye is working. See that? I taped it to the back so it wouldn't be flapping around. The magic eye is working, at least on FM it is. That's brilliant. It's not a very difficult tube to get, it's an EM80, but at least it's a plus. Now I'm going to I'm going to change the makeshift antenna at the back here, and I'm going to put it into the other input uh, antenna input. So we can try and get some FM, some uh, medium wave and short wave. Let's see how that fares. All right. I've changed the antenna uh, input to the normal antenna input and I'm going to power it on again. We have the same effect. 
No shorts, thy light is on. Putting it on to medium wave. We have something. Now I don't expect to get much here because I believe the last time I checked we had one uh, medium wave station in Madeira. But it is receiving. Let's see if we get lucky. Short wave. Yeah, definitely need a better antenna for this. But the static seems to be consistent with the short wave signal. That noise is probably just the Wi Fi in the house. wave. Well we've got noise. That's brilliant. Ready to go on to the next stage. 